In this video, we will discuss how to determine the coefficient of thermal conductivity of a bad conductor by Lee and Charlton's disk method. You can find out the thermal conductivity of bad conductor like glass. You see, this is the glass and this is a cardboard which is also a bad conductor and this is ebonite. It's, this is also a bad conductor of heat and they are in the form of circular disc. You take these in the form of circular disc. You see, this is the boiler where you put half of the boiler you put with water, filled with water and when it is heated, steam is produced. Steam passes through this pipe and uh, this is the top metal disc. In the top metal disc, you have a steam chamber. You see, this is the, the upper part is your steam chamber. The lower part is the metal disc. This is the hole where you put the um, thermometer. Okay, through this hole, you can put the thermometer having temperature T2. And there is arrangement to go steam out. This is the steam uh, arrangement for the steam out from the steam chamber. And, uh, and steam can uh, get in, steam get in through this pipe. You see through this pipe, steam get in and uh, after passing through the steam chamber, it gets out. The steam gets out, so after 30 to 40 minutes when steam passes through the steam chamber, then you will get a steady state you will get a steady state. You see, you have also a bottom metal disc and you put the specimen in between top metal disc and bottom metal disc. You see, this is the specimen and you put the specimen in between top metal disc and bottom metal disc as shown to you. And the whole apparatus is suspended by a clamp stand. You see, it is suspended by means of a clamp stand and you uh, insert two thermometers. This is one thermometer. You see, you have to insert two thermometers T1 and T2. This is the T2 thermometer which is inserted in the top metal disc. And uh, you see this is another thermometer T1 which you insert in the hole of the bottom metal disc. In this way, you insert the two thermometers. Okay. Then you heat the boiler by means of heating arrangement. I have heated it by means of a heater. So pass steam through the steam chamber which is in the top metal disc and wait till the steady state is reached and this will take 30 to 40 minutes to reach the steady state. And you will observe that when the steady state will be reached the temperature of the top metal disc uh, which you will see from the thermometer T2 it will be around. 100 degree centigrade and the temperature of the bottom metal disc which will be recorded or can be seen from the thermometer T1 that will be around 92 or 93 degree centigrade. The difference is about 7 degree centigrade or 8 degree centigrade. You can see from the reading of the uh, temperature of the thermometer T1 and T2 process we know the amount of heat uh, flowing uh, from the top metal disc to the bottom metal disc through the um, uh, insulating material here you have taken ebonite it is equal to h that is equal to k8 t2 minus t1 divided by x and here t2 is the temperature of the top metal disc and t1 is the temperature of the uh, bottom metal disc A is the area of the insulating material that is 
the um, sample you have taken your ebonite area of the ebonite and k is the coefficient of thermal conductivity of the sample that is the ebonite and we have to find out the value of the coefficient of thermal conductivity and how you can find out the area of the sample that is the ebonite because of it is a circular disk so area will be equal to pi r square r is the radius of the disk and you can uh, find out the diameter of the disk by means of a slide caliper and half of the diameter is will be your radius and x is the thickness of the sample that is the ebonite sample or the bad conductor of heat sample and uh, you can find out the thickness of the sample x by uh, in the help of a screw gauge and in the experiment you will find that t2 will be nearly 100 degree centigrade and t1 value is uh, less than 100 degree centigrade that is about 92 or 93 degree centigrade 7 to 8 degree centigrade there will be a difference of 7 to 8 degree temperature difference because the top metal disc will be at a higher temperature and the bottom metal disc will be at a lower temperature because heat cannot flow easily or conduction cannot takes place easily from the top metal disc to the bottom metal disc. After finding the amount of heat flow due to conduction, what you do? You take out the sample. Here you see I have taken out the sample and I have taken the two disc only and now what you do you record the temperature so after taking out the sample that is the ebonite we have to find out the amount of heat radiating from the bottom metal disc uh, that is the amount of heat due to radiation and the, we know the amount of heat due to radiation h is equal to ms dty dt this is the t is the temperature and t is the time that means amount of heat radiated per second this is the m is the mass of mass of the bottom metal disc that is the mass of the metal uh, bottom metal disc basically it is a, a steel and here is the specific heat of the bottom metal disc and you can find out the mass of this bottom metal disc by using a um, by your uh, balance and a specific heat of the bottom metal disc that is the steel you can find out from the um, known values and dt by dt this is the rate of cooling at temperature t1 so by the help of the thermometer you can find out the rate of cool, um, thermometer t2 you can calculate the rate of cooling what you do you measure the fall in temperature uh, with a, with a time interval of 30 seconds. You draw a table where at uh, 30 second interval you draw the uh, temperature. You measure the temperature and record the temperature. And you see the uh, from equation 1 we have found that the amount of heat in conduction due to conduction h is equal to k t2 minus t1 divided by x and in uh, due to radiation the amount of heat is ms dt by dt and from equation 1 and 2 you can write that k a t2 minus t1 divided by x is equal to ms dt by dt so k is equal to ms dt by dt into x divided by a into t2 minus t1 so you see all these are values I have discussed T1 is the temperature of the um, thermometer that is the placed in the bottom metal disc and A is the area you can calculate from the equation pi r square by using the slide caliper X is the thickness of the sample that is the ebonite you can calculate it by using a, a screw gauge and mass can be calculated mass of the bottom metal disc you can calculate it by means of a balance physical balance s is the 
specific it you write the specific it from the standard table and dt by dt rate of cooling at temperature t1 this you have to plot a graph so you plot a graph taking time along x axis you have taken time in interval of 30 second and you take it along x axis and temperature what you have recorded from the thermometer t1 it is the in celsius you take it in the y axis so the nature of the graph will be like this and if you draw the line this will be equal to the delta t and this will be equal to the change in temperature and this is the change in time that is change in temperature divided by change in time and this is the temperature of the, uh, the temperature of the average what you have taken in the um, observation table this is the average temperature at the average temperature you draw the straight line so when you find out dt by dt the change in temperature divided by change in time from this graph this value put in the equation equation k that is thermal conductivity and uh, putting all these values you can find out the value of the thermal conductivity of the sample that is ebonite or any sample you have taken in the experiment and remember when you take out your conducting sample that is the ebonite you should uh, you should cut off the heat supply you see i have when I cut off the heat supply then i am taking the conducting sample out you see i am taking the conducting sample out after switching off the heat supply you should remember it 